You've got periods of darkness. You've got blizzards and storms that sound like freight trains through the roof. Uh, you've got isolation. In one of the most remote places on Earth, expeditioners' bodies and minds are put to the test. Every movement, every task, everything that we do here in Antarctica is more difficult than it would be at home. You know, we're in an environment, particularly over winter, where there's a big lack of vitamin D. Your circadian rhythms are being messed with. Um, you're living and working in darkness and, and you're isolated and confined. During that time, fatigue is building. You know, you start to forget things here and there. The physical and cognitive changes experienced by expeditioners like Andy Wharton are being monitored with this little button. It's a wearable biosensor that can track a range of physiological variables, including heart rate, temperature, heart rate variability um, and position. It's not just providing vital medical grade data to help expeditioners over the long winter months in Antarctica. We are entering a new era of space exploration. The study is Commercial being run space with space the Translational space Research space Institute for Space Health in the United States. Well, living and working in Antarctica is probably about as close to space as you're ever going to get standing on the Earth. With its expertise in remote and extreme environment medicine, the Hobart-based Australian Antarctic Division has been working with NASA on medical research and operational medicine since 1993. The challenges faced by expeditioners are very similar to the challenges faced in space by astronauts on the International Space Station, for example. As well as the sensors, the Antarctic Division is working with NASA on cognition tests, ultrasound testing and body morphology studies. We're closely collaborating on trying to bridge some of the challenges that astronauts will experience in long duration space flight through research we're undertaking down on the ice in Antarctica that's being simultaneously undertaken in orbit at the same time. Tasmania really is the beating heart of human space flight when it comes to Australia. As well as its Antarctic expertise, Tasmania has another advantage when it comes to space medicine. Here in Hobart, we're very fortunate to have a hypobaric chamber, uh, which is unique in the Southern Hemisphere and only one of a handful in the world with uh, this dual functionality capabilities. Um, we are able to pressurise this chamber to simulate depths uh, of up to 50 metres below the sea and we're able to depressurize it to uh, uh, the equivalent of altitudes of over 100, uh, up to 100,000 feet above sea level or the surface pressure of uh, the planet Mars. <laughs> Today, doctors and nurses are undergoing hypoxia training in the chamber, learning to recognize how they could be deprived of oxygen in an aviation or space setting. There are uh, a range of possible scenarios where things can go wrong and where this type of training would be very useful. There are plans for the chamber to soon be used for long duration studies with people living inside for up to two weeks and to test spacesuits and equipment. If you are going to have a mission like this, somebody is probably going to have a significant... This time. week, astronauts, spaceflight engineers, doctors and policymakers descended on Hobart for a conference focused on human spaceflight. Astronaut and physician Jay Bucky says Tasmania's input with Antarctic expedition research is particularly useful when it comes to mental challenges. But if you look at what ends missions, you know, ends missions on Antarctica and other places, it is a lot of time it's the, uh, it's the psychosocial factor. Either crews that don't get along or people who develop uh, depression or stress. And so that's a really, really important consideration and shouldn't be trivialised. Tara Martin is leading the Tasmanian government's push for more of the global space industry. She sees parallels between the growth in Antarctic tourism and the advent of commercial and civilian spaceflight. As that occurs, there will be more interest in being able to train people to undertake those flights, operate the, um, the, the, the craft that go up. Tasmania sees an opportunity to um, develop a facility that would address that need, particularly when we have a lot of this expertise already sitting within the state. So some of the opportunities that could be growth areas for Tasmania include astronaut training and spacesuit testing. <laughs>